All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another episode of Warrior Week, Parables from the Pit. My guest this week is my friend Franco. Franco, welcome, man. Thank you for having me. You come from, uh, from a long, long way, man. Other coast, New York. New York City. Yes, we got a New Yorker in the house. And we're going to talk about Franco's experience here at Warrior Week. And uh, you don't want to miss this story. Gentlemen, sit down, relax, and enjoy what's coming. All right. All right. So, when was the first time you got exposed to Warrior Man? A friend of mine, a fellow brother, uh, Ray Catanio, actually introduced me to Warrior. Uh, it was the beginning of 2016. Mm -hmm. He was in the process of Warrior Week. Uh, we had actually lost connection for about nine or ten years, and he was in his process of uh, learning about himself, and in that process, we reconnected. So he ended up bringing the concept of Warrior Week uh, to me, told me about it, and I watched some videos, and uh, that's that's not necessarily where it started, but that was the first introduction that I had to Warrior uh, in general. And my first actual Warrior experience was uh, Warrior Con 1 mm -hmm. in uh, June of 2017. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And uh, so you come to Warrior Con. What, uh, what was the takeaway from you in that experience? Oh, um, I didn't even know how to be real with myself. Um, I, I had uh, the biggest exercise for me uh, was when we started talking about the facts in our lives. And it was an extremely painful process for me at that time. Um, it was the first time I had ever had a real conversation with myself. And I remember the most, the gift that I got was the uh, exercise when we had to sit and meditate on the facts in our lives across our body being balanced in business. And I, I, I was shocked at what the facts actually look like on paper. Um, I was, I, I, it was, it, it was scary, uh, to just see what it actually was to just have some space and look at what my life was at that particular time in my life. And, and I hated much of what I wrote down on that piece of paper. So quite shocking experience and what, uh, you know, we put down the current reality of what is of just stepping out and looking at ourselves. It's like kind of like watching ourselves in a little mo mini movie, right? You watch there and you watch there yourself as this guy that's watching the movie. The only thing is that the guy that is the main actor in the fucking movie is yourself. And you're like, holy shit, like I'm that guy today. And you're like, wait a second, do I want to continue being that guy? Right. That's the question. That's a quality question that comes up. So what are some of the questions that showed up for you? Right. Because right away, it's not the answer. The answer is not there. But the question shows up. So what are some of the questions that showed up for you? I was uncomfortable with who I was. I had uh, my daughter, Sienna, which was the biggest catalyst for me looking for something more. And I didn't even know what that meant. And uh, I realized on paper that I, I just wasn't proud of who I was. And if I had to share what I wrote down with my daughter, who at the time was two, uh, she wouldn't have understood. But I knew that as a grown up, I'd, I would have a very difficult time sharing what I wrote down on that piece of paper. Huh. Beautiful. And uh, what that shocking moment, what did that push you to? What was the next step for you? So I went all in, or so I thought, um, <laughs> all in. Uh, that definition has, has changed for me quite a bit through this process of warrior. But I went all in on what I thought were the warrior systems at that time. So I started doing core four. I started uh, you know, uh, what I thought was telling the truth. Uh, little did I know I, I was so far from telling the truth at that time in my life. Um, but I started seeing gains mm. uh, from doing the daily deposits, the simple but not easy work that we do. And all of a sudden, things started to feel good. I started to feel good about my body. One of the biggest lessons I learned in my body was that I was sedating and drinking six, five, six days a week, uh, two to three drinks a night at that time in my life. And one of the first things that I did was I decided to do a sobriety challenge. Yeah. The clarity that I got for myself was, was amazing at that time. And uh, the issue was that I still wasn't telling the truth. 
So no, none of the things that I had done were ever had a chance of actually lasting because it was still built on a foundation of lies. And I saw some growth during that time. And then it wasn't until I had my son, uh, well, my wife had my son, but uh, our son, uh, we were blessed with him in August, a few months after Warrior Con, that it, it really hit me. And I didn't understand at the time, but I, I couldn't even hold my son. Hmm. And now I understand it looking back that it, what I couldn't see or, or it was painful was the reflection that I saw of myself in his eyes. Mm. As much as he was just a little boy and he was only a few months old, in a weird way, he was the only person that truly saw me. Mm -hmm. And I spent so much time running at that part of my life uh, from the facts that I never really stood in the mirror to take a look and to just let it be. And he was that mirror for me, uh, which eventually led me to calling you uh, after our business leadership in summit in October. Um, I sent the message uh, saying that I'm all in. And at that time in my life, I had no clue what all in meant. But more importantly, I had no clue how I was going to make all in happen. <laughs> because uh, financially, I was in a place uh, where I was in huge financial deficit at that yeah. point in my life. Um, but I felt called. And I, I didn't know why. I didn't know how I was going to make it happen. But I knew that if, if I didn't have something different in my life, I, I could see the darkness that was coming for me for the first time ever. I was aware <laughs> to the darkness. That's a that's a good point that you bring in because Warrior Week, uh, Warrior Week is 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 this huge, huge commitment, right? It's not only the financial side of it, but also it's it's you sitting there as a man, and you're like, okay, man, like what kind of fucking brain damage is it gonna cause? Because because this is gonna this is gonna require a lot of fucking work for me, man. It's gonna require a lot of work for me to discover who I am to understand this concept of going all in. This is not a physical uh, experience. This is not an emotional experience. This is not a spiritual experience. This is not a financial and a business experience. This is all of it combined together at the same time. And, and the same question needs to be answered across four areas. And the, the, there needs to be a fucking harmony in the answers. Like, you can't have a guy that comes to Warrior and talks business, 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 and can't say a fucking word when it comes to his family and his kids. Or you can't have a motivator to come to Warrior and says, I've done this, I've climbed this mountain, I've climbed that mountain, I've run 900 miles, I've done so many push-ups, and this, and this, and this, and ignore the fact that he's been divorced three fucking times and has no children at 43. Right? Because Warrior stops. That kind of guy that says, whoa, hold on one second. Like, there's a lot of thrive on that area. There's a lot of respect on that area. And Warrior asks the question, doesn't judge. Like, we don't judge anyone here, but there's a question that is asked. We don't ask the question to satisfy ourselves with the answer because the answer is fucking yours. But the question is, what about that area? What about this area? Where is the harmony between how you're going all in, let's say, in your, your physical journey and your spiritual journey. What are the steps that you've taken care of in order to develop your spirituality? Or is it the same fucking level that you were? Like you say, okay, I believe in God, and that's about it. Okay, what have you done in the past 40 years to develop that, right? So this is what Warrior asks, and Warrior asks question, and obviously there's a question that showed up for you to decide and say, I'll go, I'm going to go all in on this experience Warrior Week, which was a very, it's, it's a courageous act when you stand up and you say, I will do this, not knowing how the fuck you're going to pull it up together. Like, let's talk about it. Like, how the fuck I'm going to put the money down for the tuition? How, where is this thing going? So talk to me what was going on in your head when you actually decided to, to step up and, like, keep your word. Because a lot of guys stand up and say, I want to do this, I'm all fucking in, only to back away from those three words, all in. So I, I was tired of running, and I didn't even realize that I was running. I was running, and, and I, I was just tired. And I, uh, up until Warrior... I didn't even realize that I was running. Mm. And I, I felt tired. I felt like I was running every day. And I didn't realize 
that I was running, and I didn't know what I was running from. So Warrior, for me, exposed me. And w the new reality that I looked at was fucking unbearable. Mm. So when I committed all in, I really didn't know how that was going to happen. But I knew that my son, who was a few months old, and my daughter at the time deserved better. Mm. And I didn't know how I was going to give them better, but I knew this was the only answer I had. And I, I didn't even I didn't include my wife in that conversation just now because at that time I wasn't really including her at all. Mm. And I didn't even know, but we were we were headed down a dark path that had it not been for Warrior or some massive shift or pattern interrupt, I would have ended up divorced because I was gonna run our relationship into the ground without even knowing. So I came back to tell my wife, um, actually after Warrior Con I stood up and I I said I'm going to be part of Warrior Leadership at mm. the time. That was a program that we had. And I called her and I said, I, ha I have to do this. And you know, I was totally desperate. Um, and she said, okay. And when I, and she, it wasn't an easy okay uh, because we were in a really tough spot financially at that time. New business, new family. Um, and I made a lot of mistakes in the business. Uh, I didn't understand some of these fundamentals like the king eats first. I paid myself last. And I had been a high performer thinking it was just going to be okay mm. most of my life. And it wasn't okay, and I wasn't even aware. A and that was actually the biggest lie that I remember you asking me in a tunnel at one, one of the nights. Uh, you said, what's the biggest lie you're telling yourself? And the biggest lie was that I'm okay mm. because I, I wasn't. So m when I came back, my wife had a hard conversation with me that I wasn't ready for at that time, and it triggered the fuck out of me. And it actually was my motivator at the time to do a lot of the work, um, or so I thought the work was, uh, during after WarriorCon. She said, you're just going to quit again after you're done being excited. Mm. And, and that was hard to hear, and it was the truth. And at that time, I had done a lot of things in the past, and I'm somebody goes all in, 100% committed for short bursts, and, and then I get bored and I do something different. So I didn't understand what all in meant, but the day I told you I was all in, I said, I'm gonna figure it out, and I didn't have the money for it. Mm -hmm. uh, about two weeks uh, or a week later, you told me, figure it out, G you know, give you two, two weeks to figure it out. And one thing that I've learned at Warrior is that every time I truly have been all in in my heart, God has helped find the path. Mm -hmm. And I, I, to me, God is a new path for me altogether. Um, I didn't have a conversation with God, a relationship with God for many, many years. But God showed up to me in the form of a friend of mine that I had made a real estate investment about seven years before uh, for about $20,000. And I had forgotten about that investment because it was probably one of the worst investments I ever made, or so I thought, until the day that he called me up and said, hey, you want to do lunch, and handed me a check. And he said, hey, listen, I know this was a shitty investment, um, but, you know, here's 19.5 back. And seven years later, I didn't have the courage to tell him at that time, but I was, I, I, I like, broke down inside mm. because I felt like, oh, my God, maybe I'm not alone. Mm. And I called, I called my wife, and I said, I'm all in. I, you know, we got the money. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, she wanted to argue it, but it was money that we didn't have prior uh, so I called you up and I said, I'm all in. And that has been a big part of my experience at Warrior. There's many gates that I had to pass where I said all in. And up until this past quarter, uh, it was the first time I was actually finally in a place financially where I was able to make my financial commitment under the terms that are typical uh, without assistance. And you guys always said, you know, as long as you're all in, you have my, my you know, you'll support me. Mm -hmm. And and I, I figured it out, but I, I didn't know. I didn't even know how it was going to happen. It just kind of did. It is, uh, it is the structure of uh, the CEO of the universe to, uh, to, to open the doors, man. And when the doors open and when there's a path there and, and, uh, and there's a man that stands there and that holds a light in the night and sees, sees the door and sees his shadow reflecting on the door, and the only thing that's going to have that shadow extend is for the man to push the door. And, and that's that's what you did, right? You had the courage to actually touch that door and, like, push it, see your shadow extend on the other side. Uh, so many men, 
So many men are lost right there. Right there. They hold a candle. They hold the light. Some light somewhere, somehow. Somewhere, somehow, they're holding the light. They're guided. And it requires a moment of courage to leap in in order to find a version of the self that is much, much, much bigger, just like that shadow is extending on that door. So when the shadow extends that door, is a manifestation that there's a greater version of you on the other side. And on the other side, is just it requires for you to take a step. And most of us don't. Most of us just, like the majority of us, stand there and we are entertained by the door itself. And that candle has only, you know, a time, a limited time on it before it wears out. The light goes out, the door goes away, and comes the next opportunity until you find the light again and you see the door. Uh, but that happens in all our lives multiple times. I'm sure that, that you know, a your, your friend of yours handing you that check, that was in the first door that, that showed up, right? That was the door that, that you still had some light in your hand and say, yeah, we're going. Um, but that's the story of Warrior. That's the story of what we do here. That's the story of, of how things line up. And it's really not up to us. Like, we don't, we don't, you know, you coming in here and sharing the story today and putting this in the universe so that the possibility is created for the next guy. Uh, and, and, it, and it doesn't have to be warrior. It doesn't have to be anything else. It, this is not a fucking warrior conversation. It's not a marketing fucking podcast. And that's why it's not the most popular podcast, right? There are tons of podcasts out there that motivate you. And they're also great, man. And, and, you know, more, you know they, they motivate you to do some stuff. They inspire you to do some stuff. They talk about a lot of, you know, uh, business and, and even relationship but above all, there's a har harmony of this conversation is missing today for men. And that is, regardless of where your background is, from your religious and your culture and what it is, there's a harmonic conversation that needs to take place between two men that most men violate and do not allow to take space. And in that space, there's creation that takes place. Which brings you to the first, first night inside of Warrior Week, you know, into the pit, off you go. Uh, where the darkest night begins, and uh, talk to us about your experience in the pit as uh, as you walk into this process. Obviously, walked into it for thirty days, you know, remotely being prepared for this activity. You come in day one after a long day, a long physical day. You find yourself in the pit. Uh, so bring yourself for a second there, man, and like, and and just see what what took place for you in that place that shifted everything else. Um, the, the pivotal moment for me in the pit, I remember my, my face down in uh, freezing cold water. My, my body was shivering and I, I, I forget to question, but it was, it was something to the effect of what will happen if you do nothing. Mm. And that was, it was like time stopped. And, and you asked me specifically as it relates to my kids. And I don't know if you said it or I thought it, but the thought of, of another man raising my children popped into my head. And I, I, I'll never forget that moment. That for me was, was, was a very scary, powerful moment. And I, I, in, a, in that moment, I realized that one of my biggest fears was I, I come from divorced parents, and, and I, I was on that track, and I, I didn't even know it, literally until that moment. It, I, saw, I saw the images, and, and the scariest part about it were I saw how that could happen if I did nothing. Hmm. Yeah. And that often is enough clarity to give you the certainty that you you don't want to be that guy. Like at, at that point, you become certain that you don't want to be a guy that's, that is going to quit on the one thing that that actually has meaning. 
which is taking care of your family and helping them rise and helping them grow and, you know, nourish the gift that is given to you. So fast forward, uh, you know, moving forward after Warrior Week into the next step and the trainings and coming back for Return of the King and, you know, joining the experiences of, you know, Certified Trainer and Empire and Syndicate and a whole pad. Like, talk to us about what has changed in your life. What has changed for Franco? What has changed for your wife? Uh, you know, what has changed inside of your family? What has changed inside of your business? Uh, what has changed, man? Everything. There is, there is nothing that looks the same. Hmm. Um, the most important, I'll start with my family, because that was not the most important to me before I started this process. And it was the most, uh, uh, it was the area that I neglected the most. I had a lot of excuses around, you know, my business, a new startup, and, you know, I, I'm doing this for them. And that was bullshit. I was doing it for me. I was doing it for my ego. Because my family, my family didn't need me to be rich. My family needed me to be present. So the biggest gift or insight now is that my family sees me. I come home and I'm, I'm, I'm like Superman when I come home to my kids. It's the most exciting part of the day for them and for me. And the, the joy that I see within them is, is unrecognizable to me. And, and my wife... You know, it's it, this has been it's been the hardest the hardest part of this process for me. We've been together for ten years, and I was shocked at at how I've shown up for all that time for myself for her. So there's a lot of work to be done in that particular relationship, and and I I, I just I I was in the place during Warrior Week where I, at Warrior Con, I came to the realization that I financially, if I continued on the path, I was gonna lose my house. Yeah. So I, I chose, and my wife chose to, after I came back, to have a conversation and we sold our home. Uh, and thankfully it was, it, 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 we avoided what it would have been a really bad situation if we didn't have that conversation. And we, then we took a year, year and a half uh, to move into my mother's home. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, she was also going through a divorce and, you know, whatever the reason was, you know, we, we came together at this time and she supported it. And two weeks ago, we just bought our new home. Uh, on that day, I reproposed to my wife. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I have, uh, my home is just full of, of love mm -hmm. and it's, it's a happy place. I'm happy. And f I've been chasing happiness, but I was I was not looking everywhere where it was most important. So my family life is unrecognizable. I'm doing date nights with my wife every week. Um, I do date nights with my kids. Uh, I started an email for my daughter and my son. My daughter, who's three years old, has over 150 emails. <laughs> uh, it's uh, so it it's an incredible way that connects me. It's really it's for me and I'm aligning my heart with her. Um, but I send her videos now, and I send her emails of those, so she'll see them someday. Um, spirituality was, I was so lost, and I hated God. I, 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 didn't, I didn't really think he existed um, at that point in my life. I grew up Catholic. I did my first communion, confirmation, went to Catholic high school, but I was, I was a fake. And I was just going through the motions. And now I can, I can truly say I have a personal relationship with God. I hear my voice. I used to think you guys are crazy when, <laughs> you, when you talk about and hear the voice. I'm like, what the fuck voice are they talking about? And I, I truly hear my voice. And today is actually a perfect example. I've been the perfection game guy. Mm. Um, and I work, 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 work. That's something you know, I sedated with work. Today I was tired. And I knew I was coming here and I wanted to be present for this moment. And I listened to my voice. And my voice said, after I was done with what was necessary... I decided to take, take a stroll to the beach, and I did a yoga session, a meditation session, and I gave myself that gift. That's something I would have been incapable of doing within myself. Mm. Um, my body, I, I did a half Ironman last year. I, I did a sobriety challenge this year. I've, I'm doing uh, 353 days sober, um, so I gave myself 12 days for the year. I've only drank two days this year, which was a big thing for me. 
I'm training for an amateur boxing fight now, uh, which is completely new and totally uncharacteristic of me. Um, immense power that I'm getting from that. I'm in the best shape of my life. I lost like 25 pounds in the last two years, um, since or a year and a half since this process started. Um, my business uh, has grown significantly. I've went from not paying myself uh, to doubling my income last year, uh, paying myself consistently, rising in the business, but I was completely lost in the business and it was feeling it. The vision was lost within me and I was supposed to be the leader of the vision, so how was my team gonna survive? Um, having powerful collisions that I used to run away from in my business, the certainty, the power, um, across everywhere in my life, it, to me it is completely unrecognizable. And I'm, not, and I'm no longer playing perfect, because there is no perfect, and every day I show up and progress is what I'm looking for, and I love this fucking game. This game has changed my whole life and, and impacted me for the rest of my life. I have revelations that are mine, that I am passing along to my children someday. I, I, my word, my, my thoughts matter, and that's a huge new game for me because I didn't feel worthy enough. Um, my father and I have had a tumultuous relationship my whole life, and this past quarter, uh, my challenge was to reconnect with my father, and it, it was brought on by one of my fellow warrior brothers whose father passed away, and talking about the power of questions, I sent the video, and a lot of times my father hadn't responded for a while, and I sent him a video, and in the video I said to him, I'm not happy with where we are, but if you were to die, or I were to die today, I know that I haven't done enough. I haven't done everything that I can do. And if you feel like you have, or you haven't, then maybe it's the time for both of us to get some help. And we started going to therapy. Mm. And I had the most powerful therapy session with my father, followed by our first date together, um, y Sunday, yesterday actually. Mm. And I spoke to my father for three hours, which, I, I never, just the two of us, have a conversation about childhood, about his pain. I shared my pain, and it created a whole new understanding of, of our relationship. And you know, it identified so many reasons why we were where we were. But the reality is, without me having the clarity within myself, I never would have been able to have that conversation with my father. Mm -hmm. And you know, God forbid something you know would happen to him because nothing is promised. Um, that's an opportunity that I wouldn't have gotten without the work that we've done. So uh, uh, everywhere in my life, I, it's not perfect. There's plenty of things that I'm w actively working on all the time, but I'm just fucking happy. Mm. Beautiful. And, uh, you know, you living this way and obviously, um, you know, some of the fruits and the results that, that you've created in your life uh, had an impact on other people, had an impact specifically on some uh, on another man. And, uh, you know, you, uh, just another man watching you go through this and change, he's literally fucking watching you, knocked at your door and said, dude, like, like I, want, I, I, want, I want a chance at this too. And as a result of it, he came towards. So tell us about the story of that because often, like, you wouldn't even see yourself having an impact on you. <laughs> you know, never, never, never mind having an impact on others. And now as a result of your action, which was nothing, you didn't market this shit, you didn't broadcast, you just, you just live this way. And people say, okay, well, what is this, what is this way that you got? Well, it's not fucking complicated. It, it's a system that says the following, stop fucking lying. Just stop fucking lying about everything. Just stop. Stop lying. Just stop the lies and choose to tell the truth. And yes, it's going to get uncomfortable. And yes, you're going to lose a lot of friends. You're, at, at, at time, you're going to feel that you're alone, but you're truly not alone because you've just get out, got rid of everything else that was entertained by your fucking lies. And now that you've tried, you've decided to tell the truth, your surrounding is going to reset. Your magnetic field is going to attract those that are supposed to be in your truth. And you realize that whoever that was there before wasn't part of your truth. The truth is not something that we all obey to. Each of us have our own truth based on our experience. And the truth expands as we expand. The shadow on that door expands so we can expand. 
I cannot have the closed mindset that says my shadow is only five foot eleven. I can't. If if I'm closed minded on that, then I cannot see a shadow that is seven or eight foot. And therefore, if I see it, I won't believe it. I won't have the courage to follow it. But when you do, you actually set an example for others to also believe in the, the possibility of expansion and growth. So talk to us about that experience, Franco. So what I didn't say about the, the man that showed up with the check that day was that I was so grateful for that check, but I was such a fucking liar at that time that I didn't even have the courage to tell him what he really had just done for me and for in showing up with this uh, because I was broken and I, I was ashamed of where I was. And though obviously you, you know what happened, it, you know, it showed up that day, I was able to do it. So fast forward to uh, the beginning of this year, January, that same man is the one that came to me. Mm. So he showed up at my, my door, similar to him, and he was broken. But he had seen me share from a very different place throughout this process um, because I, I got to a place where I was, I, I was deathly afraid of telling a lie because yeah. I, I realized what happened. So I finally, he, he noticed something changed in me later on um, and I don't remember exactly when, but you know, he had asked me one time, you know, how am I doing? And mm. a very typical response is, oh, I'm good, I'm fine. And I was, I was, uh, you know, warrior Kool Aid up <laughs> at that time mm -hmm. in my life. So I was like, you really want to know? <laughs> and he said, yeah, how are you doing? So I told him, I said, I, I just found out that I've, I've been sedating most of my life. I'm fucking broken. I'm drinking. I. I hate what I see in the mirror. I can't hold my son because of the reflection I see. I am disconnected with my wife, my kids. I hate my business. I resent. I, I mean, I just unleashed exactly where I was and how I was at that time. Mm. And he couldn't. He, he, it, was, it was a lot to take in at that time. And he just kind of took it in. And that was months before he came to me. But he came to me in, in a very, very dark place. And he felt safe, um, which uh, I, that's essentially what I, I, I opened up, I feel, for him, was just an opportunity to feel safe because what I shared with him was probably the realest conversation he had had with another man. So he felt safe to have a real conversation with me. And I just held space. You know, I, I, I actually I reached out for some guidance uh, from you know, Coach Jesse, I think, at the time. And he said, just be you. And and just hold space, and that's what I did. Uh, so I, I didn't convince him. I didn't tell him this is what you need to do. You know, I just I listened and I shared my pain. And one of the things that I've I've learned is that you know, pain divided, you know, is is by pain shared. And in the past, I never had the courage to do that. So I, I uh, that was our connection. And I think. I don't think I know God had a lot to do with that because just the the way the story unraveled, you know, he was the the way that I was able to financially swing it at that time. And here I am listening to him and sharing my story of the journey that began because of that check uh, that he handed over to me. And I was able to say thank you hmm. for the first time because I, I was I was able to be honest with where I was. So. Um, I'm, I'm grateful that, you know, he chose to go all in for himself and his family and his new daughter. And now, you know, I'm seeing the impact in him and, and that's, uh, it, it fills me in a way that's indescribable. It's an amazing story how the man with, uh, the, the check actually ends up following your footpath towards this journey here. I mean, the, the footpath that he followed, it was, uh, was just warrior, but warrior is not the only way. Is 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 one of the ways that leads to the way, and he found a way, and he he's a changed man. He's a changed man. Family has changed, and he's 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 expanding. Of course, he's still in the process, and uh, but like here, a few months from now, we'll all be sitting in a room, and it's just it's a crazy story, and it's a story that I like you to tell on the stage, uh, because it, it it's 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 how. It's how those pieces of the puzzles are all pre-made and they're all coming together. And once you put it together and you're like, okay, this, this is this part. 
and now I want to go explore other parts. But also you identify the relations, the relations that are involved in you putting the pieces together. Uh, you know, what you did when you actually shared where your truth was at that time was simply a permission that is possible. It is possible to declare your truth. And people make it so complicated, man. It, like the truth is, it's, it's become this fantasy land where people want to, you know, become a hero just because they're fucking telling it. You're not fucking, you're not a hero because you're telling the truth. That, that's, that's the mentality. If you, if you think you're a fucking hero because you're telling the truth, then that is not the truth. The truth doesn't want any fucking heroes. The truth doesn't want anybody to defend it. There is no army that is going to defend the truth. It stands by itself. Men fabricate the idea that the truth needs to be protected. But in fact, it's not. And so we're caught up in, in learning that as young boys and growing up and growing up and even thinking up to now, closed-minded motherfuckers thinking that the truth is only one way. That if you're not specifically at this hour in this church in this location, then you will all go to hell. Like, okay, there's 7 billion people that are all going to burn in hell because there are not 300 of you in this specific lo That's a closed-minded motherfucker. In the process of wanting to do good, they, they're blindfolded from the possibility. They don't see a man. They don't see the shadow of a man on that door. They don't, they, they, don't, they, don't see, they don't see a shadow. They're told they're holding the light, but they don't see. It's blinds walking in the darkness, hoping that the light will find them. And the light has found them, except they need to open their eyes because they're not blind. Isn't that crazy? Yep. And so, Franco, final words, man, to a guy that's sitting here and listening to this, to this story, man, and just to, to the... To your truth, because this is what it is. This is, you know, and maybe it will be your son listening to this, you know, 19 years from now and listening to some podcast and saying his dad was here. Like, like, what is it? Or maybe it's your dad is going to listen to this next week. Or maybe it's your friend or maybe it's a guy that that relates to, you know, where you were and how you were struggling with some of these. Things. And maybe it's a guy that, you know, it's the first time that he's hearing this and like, fuck, man, this is my truth. What would, you, uh, what would you say to anyone listening to this in the future? You know, you know. <laughs> and if you just create the space to look and, and just look in the mirror, it's, it's probably the most powerful part of this whole process. Seeing myself, I knew. And I just, I just avoided knowing because it's a lot easier to avoid it's a lot easier to pretend it's a lot harder to look because uh, then you have a choice and and choice is beautiful but choice is fucking scary because then it's on you you no longer can blame somebody else you're choosing to stay where you are or you're choosing to rise and this is this is a process that's you know it's warrior says often it's it's simple it's not easy but it is simple and as as men in particular we overcomplicate the shit out of everything and the first step that i would just say if any of this is connecting with you is just to take a few minutes and truly look in the mirror by yourself no distractions just be by yourself and look directly into your heart not your head your heart because all the answers lie there. And you can tell yourself, you can tell your friends, you're happy, you're good, you're fine, you're whatever. But when you're sitting there with you and just you, the answer will come to you as to what's right for you. And, you know, then just go. You're not going to figure it out without going. And I, I thank my wife for the gift because at first I needed that kick in the ass that I quit. I start and then I quit. So it started out with just go, and it started out because I was going to prove her wrong, which never lasts, you know, because unless it's something within you, it's, it's just going to be height, and it'll die after some time, especially when it gets hard. But the answer will come 
if you look at yourself, you answer honestly, and then you go, despite the evidence of the results happening today. I was having a conversation, and the last thing I'll share, with the same man that I was talking about, and he said, shit, you know, why, why aren't things better already? I said, because it's been a month. <laughs> <laughs> I said, and I understand, because I felt the same way. So I just put my head down and just trusted the process. That is the, that's one of the, well, the warrior rules that I really learned over and you know, had to get beat down to understand it. Um, but when you really understand, just trust the process and let yourself to God's will or whatever you believe in to your higher power, but just to just trust the process and go, the answer always comes up. I couldn't see where I'm at today a year and a half ago. It was, it was just, it, if I tried to look, it was not impo it was impossible to see. So I just looked at what was there in front of me in the mirror, and I took a first step, and then I just continued to take steps. Beautiful. Well, hey, man, thanks for making it here. Thanks for being on the show. I know it's uh, you no know, long way to be down here, and uh, we look forward for uh, having you back on the show, man. Thank you so much. This is an honor. All right. And uh, for those of you that have resonated with, uh, with this podcast and this conversation, uh, it's one thing that you can do. That's the best thing is just to share it with another guy. Just like Franco did that day and shared it with somebody else, share the message. Just take this and, hey, listen, bro, have you listened to this conversation? I need you, I need you to listen to this. Or, uh, you know, I'm going to share this podcast hoping that you can listen to this. I felt in my heart that you can listen to this. Sharing this is the best way. And we're not, we're not looking for likes. We're not looking for followers. We're not looking for popularity. Uh, if you share this with someone, not I don't want you to share this on Facebook. I don't want you to share this on Instagram. I'm not looking for some generic shares. That's not what I mean here. I'm saying select one man. Select one man. That's what we mean here by share. Be effective. Be efficient. Have an impact. Select one dude in your life that you think would benefit from this conversation and just deliver this link, deliver this content to him. And that's what we mean by share. We never, ever, ever want it to be popular. We want it to be individually impactful. And if we can impact thousands and millions, and if that's the definition of a popularity, well, fuck it, yeah. We'll go, we'll go get it that way. So this is available on iTunes, warriorweeknow.com, video, audio, and the description on the codes involved in the podcast, not only with Franco, but also with... 40, 50 other men so far that have gone through this process. We wish you a fantastic rest of your evening.